A horrifying series of murders keeps the entire city in fear. Don't miss out. The ghosts of the victims will expose the cruel maniac. This is Psychics Investigations, a channel of true and shocking stories. Here, people who call themselves clairvoyants investigate incredible paranormal phenomena and complex, high-profile criminal cases. Ukraine. May 2018, 8 p.m. Hundreds of people gathered to celebrate the day of their city in the Central Park. Little did they know that within just a few hours, they would all be searching for a missing girl named Maria. Maria Zakarevich, 17 years old, dressed in a white sweater and jeans. Such announcements flooded all social media. It was the 26th, the day of the city. After we met, we went for a walk in the park. Then Maria suddenly said she wanted to go home. She hugged me, said goodbye, and left. Veronica still doesn't understand why her friend decided to leave so abruptly, especially since she promised her mom she'd be home by 11. It's a five minute walk from the park to Maria's home. However, she never returned there. I called her and heard the tone, but she wouldn't answer. Maria's mother called all her daughter's friends, but Veronica was the only one who had seen Maria before she disappeared. What else could we think? Something happened to the child. That's it. The celebration ended. All of Maria's family and friends rushed to search for the missing beauty. We went to the park and searched the entire area. I kept dialing her number, but again, there were just the tones, but no answer. We showed everyone her photo and dropped by all the cafes around. But no witnesses or no leads were found. A patrol car stopped and I explained everything. We reported her as missing. The police spent several hours searching around the park, nearby streets, stations, and residential areas. Patrol cars circled everywhere, sirens blaring. The search lasted for 14 hours, but had no results. The only hope was to track her phone but the satellite data shocked everyone. The signal came from the Central Park, which the police officers and volunteers had scoured thoroughly. However, even after another attempt, they found no girl, or at least her phone. The police immediately called in a K-9 unit. The dog picked up the trail and finally found Maria. She lay in the bushes, partially undressed and lifeless. Her phone was nearby, still ringing as her worried mother kept dialing her. She was just there, next to the path. Why couldn't anyone find her? There were so many people. Could she have been dropped there later? I didn't believe it until the end. I kept saying it wasn't her. I don't even want to accept it. The cause of Maria's death was mechanical asphyxiation due to strangulation. Horrific bruises remained on her neck from the killer's hands. The question keeps haunting me. Why? She was such a small, innocent girl. The police didn't view the version of robbery as the motive for the murder because all Maria's valuables were found near the body. Only her shoes, jeans, and underwear were missing. The crime could have been an attempted rape. And the killer took the victim's belongings because it bore his DNA. However, the initial examination revealed no signs of genital injuries typically present in sexual assault cases. But her face was badly bruised. The investigation hit a dead end. They found no fingerprints, nothing. I couldn't even imagine how hard it would be. The inhuman act not only claimed the girl's life, but also shattered her mother's world. She was my only child, and I devoted myself to her. Now, I have nothing to live for. It's been so long. I want them to finally find my daughter's murderer. I want to ask the psychics to help us find out who did. Our project's experts, Olga Kalinova and Yana Pasinkova, take on the case. Yesterday, Maria's spirit visited to me. She extended a glove to me and said, when you see this thing, there'll be two of us. Does it mean the maniac is now hunting someone else? 
But then I couldn't have imagined that the following day, I'd look right into the eyes of the one who hurt the poor girl. I see an image now. It's either a well or a tunnel. It's dark. The lid above my head closes and the light disappears. The secret in the water will be revealed when the woman emerges from the tunnel. The following morning, the psychics are already at the building where Maria lived. Hello. Hello. Please come in. My daughter was murdered. I want you to find who did it. I see him descending somewhere. It's a place where he spends most of his time. There's light, but it's coming from underground, and I can't see anything. A dark room, and he goes out for a hunt, like a beast, you know? When she was murdered, I said, my dear, please tell me what happened to you. And I had a dream. There was a cabin, and from the cabin, a creature, like a werewolf, emerged. I see an image, a man's large hand with something resembling a postage stamp in it. This small detail will expose the murderer. A voice told me, you will save two lives when the girl removes the pendant with the red gem. It was Maria's voice, but what exactly did she mean? Whose lives need saving? And what does a pendant have to do with it? I need to tune into the place where your daughter's body was found. Stop. Your daughter is showing me a white sweater. Maria gave me this sweater just two days before her death. She said, Mommy, wear this sweater and always remember me. I asked Inna to bring the sweater with her. Five minutes later, the psychics are in the park where nothing reveals the recent brutal murder that occurred here. Whenever I think of her lying here, I haven't been here in a long time. I brought flowers, but after that, I couldn't come back. At that moment, I saw a similar image, the park and flowers being thrown to the ground by a man. If only I had known, I was seeing the one who murdered the innocent girl. This young man was alone, standing in the darkness waiting for his victim. I hear only one thought in his mind. She must not see my face. He waited until the girl reached the end of the path, where there were no people at that moment. Then he crept up to her, and then I only saw a swing of his hand. She felt pain in her head. She didn't understand what, what was happening and passed out immediately. Did he attack her from behind? Your daughter fell face down. That's why her face was covered and bruised. Her head was, and nose were bloodied. The murderer couldn't reveal himself or show his true face because in real life, he hides behind the mask of an ordinary man. But who is this person? Why did he kill the girl? And why did he take her clothes? It's a trophy. He holds them, scenting your daughter's dead body. And it helps him recall the moment when she stopped breathing. It gives him great pleasure. He likes remembering his crime. It incites lust within him. The lust was the motive of the murder. He raped your daughter. When the forensic experts announced their conclusion later, it came as a shock for the family, as Maria had indeed been raped. The police initially failed to find characteristic signs or evidence of sexual assault, as the girl was unconscious during the attack. She didn't understand what was happening, and she didn't feel pain when he raped her. I had another dream. She told me, Mommy, I didn't even realize what happened to me. 
He's tall and skinny and his hair is cut short. It was too dark here, so I can't see him properly. God, who is this man? Who killed you, my dear girl? Your daughter is here now. She's reaching out to touch you. My baby daughter, I love you so much. I don't know what to do or how to go on living without you. I only lived for you. She says, I want to be with you too, but what you were going to do wouldn't unite use. Did you try to commit suicide? Yes, when she died. I didn't want to live anymore. Maria, tell us, who killed you? What did he look like? She says, Nika knows what the murderer looks like. But who is Nika? It's her friend Veronika. Everyone called her Nika. She might be able to describe the murderer. Perhaps she knows him, or she probably witnessed Maria's murder. She was the last person to see her alive. They were together on that day, her and Maria, just the two of them. Veronica didn't tell you everything she knows about that terrible evening. Where can we find her? I don't know for sure where she lives, but I have her phone number. Can we call Veronica now? Yes. Veronica, can we meet and talk? At the place where you and Maria parted ways. Yes, yes, I can. The psychics are at the local printing house. According to Veronica, Maria went home through the park from here. Hello. You were the last person to see Maria alive? Yes. Maria and I were sitting on the benches near the fountain. Then Volodymyr and Danilo phoned us. It turns out that Volodymyr and Danilo go to the same school as the girls, and Veronika had started communicating with them recently. What was next? They suggested going for a walk and we met up. We stood there and talked, and then we came here. And Maria said she wanted to go home. But I sensed that one of the boys didn't want to let Maria go. Which one? Volodymyr, he suggested walking her home, but she refused and said she would be absolutely fine going alone. I understood that Veronika wasn't telling us everything. I sensed that someone called you and informed you that Maria was killed even before her mother found out. Yes, I was asked not to tell anyone. Do you have a photo of this, Volodymyr? Wait. Yes, he's the one who informed you about your friend's death. While the entire city was still searching for Maria, he already knew she was dead. But how? Volodymyr called me. His friend's mother is a forensic scientist, and she told him that they had found Maria in the park. Wait. There's someone else who's connected to the police. And they are somehow linked to this Volodymyr and your daughter's murder. It's a uniformed man. He has a friend, and her father is an investigator. He's the one who found Maria. Incredible. One person discovered the body, and another conducted the examination. Yet neither yielded any evidence nor fingerprints that could lead to the murderer. And both of these people know Volodymyr. Did you know that? No, I didn't. What are the clairvoyants trying to say? Could Volodymyr be involved in the girl's murder? At the interrogation, the young man told the investigators that he had gone home that evening and hadn't seen Maria again. However, I'm surprised that the police didn't conduct any additional interrogations to prove his alibi. I sense that this young man was in love with your daughter, but his feelings weren't mutual. He liked Maria a lot, but she didn't pay attention to him. Could the young man have taken Maria's life simply because she didn't return his feelings? At that moment, I heard Maria's voice. She said, there is a girl whose silence unleashed the murderer. I thought it might be Veronica, but then I suddenly saw a horrifying scene.
I see a girl of about 18. She's wearing sportswear. She's on an evening jog. And behind her, I see the silhouette of a tall man. The clairvoyant feels unwell. Olga Kalinova asks for a few minutes to regain composure. Please explain what you saw here. I had a vision of the man attacking the girl. He struck her on the head and dragged her into the bushes, where he began choking her, just like Maria. He wanted to kill her, but this girl survived. She was moments away from death, but someone startled him and he fled. But who was it? Vladimir or someone else? He has the same energy as the man who took Maria's life. But unlike your daughter, this girl remembered the face of the attacker. I sensed that he acted carelessly and seemed confused. All because this unknown girl was his first victim. I didn't know that. If I had known, she would have stayed home and I wouldn't have let her go anywhere. Your daughter died a few days after the maniac attacked his first victim. And it could have been different if that girl hadn't remained silent. She didn't go to the police immediately. She didn't even tell anyone right away. She was shocked, you see. That's why Maria said the silence of the girl unleashed the murderer. The maniac's first victim was Olha, a 22-year-old medical college student. We don't disclose her family name for her safety. The victim didn't report the assault immediately. She only did it after the news gained resonance. It was on the May 24th, a maniac attacked a girl while she was jogging in the evening, but he failed to strangle her to death, and she simply passed out. Katerina Malichenko phoned Olha many times, trying to get in touch with her, but in vain. Olha wouldn't answer, so we couldn't talk to her. Although I'm sure she needs time to recover and come to her senses after such a shock. Maria's words about Veronica knowing what the murderer looks like haunted me. And at that moment, I felt that she learned about it from the first victim of the maniac. Veronica, how do you know about the first victim of the murderer? And what did she tell you? I was at the interrogation after Maria's death. There was this girl there who described the man. She said his hands smelled strongly of cigarettes. And she said he had huge hands, dark skin, and wrinkles on his face. And that he was around 30 to 35 years old and about 1.75 meters tall. But based on the description, this man doesn't resemble Volodymyr at all. It's an older man and a chain smoker. Volodymyr doesn't smoke, he's an athlete. But if Volodymyr is not the murderer, then who is this elusive strangler? And how can he be found? Maria's spirit is here. She says, forgive me, my dear Beatty. This is what Maria used to call me. She always called her Beatty. Maria says, I didn't want to offend you and spoil the celebration for you. Her funeral was on the 30th and on the 31st I had a birthday. I couldn't even imagine that something like this could happen. Maria showing me a black glove now. The police told us that they'd found a glove at the crime scene. They took it for examination, but they didn't find any leads. The murderer left the glove at the crime scene by accident. Yes, it wasn't an accident that he took it off. He wanted to touch his victim's body after assaulting her. Maria asks you not to cry, and she says that she now has a friend on the other side. Wait. Two dead girls on the other side want to stop the rapist. I understand now. Yana, 
Do you remember I had a vision in which Maria handed me a glove and said, when you see this thing, there will be two of us? Maria's friend on the other side is another victim of the same maniac. Unfortunately, like Ina's daughter, she didn't survive. Maria says that this girl's name was Alina, and the murderer did to her the same thing as he did to your daughter. I sense that someone here knows about this case. Don't stay silent. Yes, I know it. I knew Alina. She was my neighbor. We lived on the same street. At that time, I didn't even think that I would encounter the monster who brings flowers to the murdered girl at the crime scene. Stay tuned. The shocking investigation goes on. The clairvoyants will find another victim and finally confront the criminal. Admit it. It gave you pleasure. What are you talking about? Should I call the police? It would be a good idea. We have something to tell them about you. Don't miss out. Watch the next episode to know how this investigation ended. And if this story shocked you, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Many more amazing investigations are coming up.